So I'm logged into my Proxmox server right now and I wanted to bring up some of the command line utilities that come with this system and how these can be used. And so they've got a good number of commands built in. You know, PVE performance um, will spit back the speed of your server that you're running Proxmox on. CPU and BOGO MIPS, the regular expressions per se second, hard drive side size, uh, file syncs per second, and access to internal and external DNS in milliseconds. So that's that's interesting if you're running a little bit of benchmarking. Uh, but then they break things down into two other commands. You've got the QM command, uh, which is for the standard virtual machines. And you've got the PCT command, which is for containers. So we'll start off and we'll run through a few of the QM commands. So if you're logged in and you want to list the VMs, you simply type QM list and it will spit back the list of VMs with their status, the amount of RAM that's assigned to them, and the size of the boot disk. And if they're running, the process ID. If you wanted to see how much memory just one specific machine had and you didn't want to list them all to find this out, you could say QM config. We're going to pick on the Windows 11 machine. We'll say uh, it wants the virtual machine ID, so 100. And then we're going to pipe that into grep and use the caret and memory. So it will search for memory and it reports it back as 8192, which is the same we had up here. So uh, you can also clone a virtual machine from the command line. And that would be a matter of just typing in QM clone and the ID for the original. So in this case, I did this earlier and I did 300, which is my Open Media Vault 6 test machine. And I made the uh, clone 333. I'm not going to run that again because that one was a little time consuming. Uh, you could also get the cloud in it config. And so you would say QM cloud in it dump. You need the VM ID. So we'll pick on Windows 11 again, 100. And then the type. And we'll say meta. And that should, in this case, it spits back the instance ID. You've also got the option of doing network. And it tells you some information about the network. And then user. It's able to report back that the password is not set to expire uh, and users are default so uh, doesn't give you actual usernames uh, that would be a little little scary if it did because if your Proxmox server got compromised and you knew the system then you could get a lot of information about a company's VMs that way We'll bring up our our uh, list of VMs again. All right, you can also pull the full VM configuration, and you can just do that with QM config, and then the VM ID, and it will tell you what that is. Uh, this one is not running, so. Uh, this was a machine I spun up to try to test out uh, Jellyfin 
uh, media server. I, I did not get all the way through that config. It also has the ability to import OVF uh, virtual machines from the OVF manifest. And you do that by saying QM import OVF. If I could type today, you'd have to give it a, give the VM ID you want it to be. You'd have to specify the manifest and the storage. Uh, I have not played with that command yet, uh, but that did pique my interest when I was going through and prepping for this. You can also start, stop, and suspend AVM from the command line. And again, you would use QM uh, start, stop, suspend, and then the virtual machine ID. I actually find these commands to be a little bit more straightforward than what the virtual box team makes available. But you, you know, this is, I, I'm just scratching the tip of the iceberg with this. And you, you know, it's something that once I have a little bit of a grasp on, on the command lines directly, then I could think about doing this with Ansible and being able to spin up multiple virtual machines or start various virtual machines for different lab work uh, and just, you know, automate the process to a degree that um, I can't, well, I won't say I can't do right now, but uh, it would be more time consuming for me to do it that way right now than it would be to just launch stuff from the web interface. That uh, covers the VM part of it. On the container side, uh, it's very similar. Of course, it's the PCT command instead. But you can do list and it will tell you which containers you've got. You can clone and it would just be PCT clone um, 119. 319 and it would do its thing there. Uh, as you can see, I did clone uh, 119 earlier and I made it 219. And so there are two copies of this unbound one uh, DNS container. And I have that stopped at the moment. If you wanted to delete a container, you would say PCT destroy and specify the ID number and we'll just destroy 219 because that's the reason I cloned it in the first place. So let's see, PCT start 119 should kick off that container, which is usually running by default and that did start up. You can check the disk usage of the container. PCT DF 19. And that's using 543.9 megabytes out of 30 gigabytes. Uh, so obviously I have some work to do on, on, uh, sizing of containers. I could have easily given this, you, you know, eight gigs of storage space and still been way over what I needed. But yeah, there are some pretty interesting things you can do here as well. Similar to what you can do with Docker. So if I type PCT console uh, 119, it puts me in that container. I can do a list of the processes running on that machine. The trick is I didn't write myself down instructions on how to get out of that. Um,
Um, if I shut it down, I'm assuming it'll kick me out. Yes. <laughs> There's always a way. Okay, so you can also do PCT config, which will give you the configuration of the specified container. List snapshot. <laughs> Try that. Okay, so if we do list um, so it tells you this only has the current config. It does not have any actual snapshots. 119 might Yes, after November 2020 update. So I probably need to run a new snapshot because that's horribly out of date. Approaching a year out of date. So uh, again, that's uh, just used for lab purposes. So I don't worry about that too much, especially since it's not accessible from the internet. So man pages, so man PCT which I had open a little while ago and man um, what's the other one man QM uh, has has that list available as well they also have great documentation and this is just two sections of it documentation and it's basically the man files in, in HTML. Uh, so there's this one here as well. So yes, there are man pages. There's also some some good documentation out there for in, in their wiki. So the current docs for the whole thing. I'll dump this in chat as well. Uh, but they've got it available in PDF. There's also an EPUB version if you want to dump it on your uh, Kindle uh, for the whole thing. And then you can get uh, individual chapters if you just wanted to study the firewall portion, for instance. And then they've got web versions of the man pages uh, for different things as well. So, and they've got this, uh, their API viewer. If you wanted to do this a little bit more programmatically, um, you could do that as well with uh, get and put uh, options from uh, just doing standard HTML stuff. So that, um, could be of interest as well. I, I've been very impressed with their documentation. I will I will say that. Very impressed with their documentation. I wish they had a little bit more mind share and market share in the US. The uh, alternatives out there, uh, now I haven't been a customer of VMware in a number of years for my own personal use, but the last time I was, and this has been years ago, there the documentation VMware had was not as in depth as this, uh, and maybe that was because I didn't have an enterprise level package from VMware. But this is uh, very interesting to me, and something that you know I'm using Proxmox on a pretty regular basis for things. Uh, I, I do try to keep this thing updated as much as possible, and I guess I'm a little bit behind on some, some updates. And there's firmware and a kernel update. I should probably run those. But uh, the one product that would potentially 
make me consider moving away from Proxmox somewhere down the line or uh, at least running this new system in parallel for a while is TrueNAS Scale. And this just entered beta. TrueNAS Scale, uh, of course, TrueNAS is a, a network attached storage uh, built on BSD. Uh, TrueNAS Scale is trying to put everything, including the kitchen sink, into a sister system built on the Linux kernel. So this has, you, you know, the re-implemented TrueNAS core built on Linux. Uh, and Scale adds Linux containers, KVM, and scale out ZFS capabilities. Or ZFS for people across the pond that might be listening later. So this, to me, has the potential to dethrone my love of Proxmox. I probably won't completely migrate to it until it hits a 2.0 version, but I will definitely start testing uh, once it comes out of beta and I might dedicate a machine while it's in beta to some testing. <laughs> So this has some pretty big potential to me. In a future video series, I was planning on building an application server. Uh, Proxmox may be the way to go other than VMware. Uh, yeah. So uh, Proxmox has been rock solid for me. So the server that I've got running, my little 1U server that's 10 plus, well, probably between 12 and 15 years old. I've had it since uh, 2013. Um, that machine is, uh, has been rock solid running um, since, what, June of 2020? It was when the last time I reinstalled Proxmox. And I did, did an in-place upgrade from 6.4 to 7.0, and that went smoothly. And the only reason I've been considering rebuilding lately is to put solid-state drives in there instead of spinning rust. So, uh, in Proxmox, there is not a Samba AD module by default. Uh, that is something you could install, um, but again, it would take you going to the, the command line and, you know, just doing apt install Samba and, and, you know, various other packages that are needed to implement that. Uh, and it would not be exposed in the graphical interface, but, um, it's something that you could do, or you could run, uh, the... Samba AD in a VM. So uh, that is another option. Um, I try to put as much stuff of mine in VMs as I can because of the snapshot, snapshot capabilities. Uh, and, you know, it makes it real convenient to uh, go go back and restore something if if I screw up a configuration which I have done <laughs> I have done I have borked my fair share of working systems um, but yeah that's uh, pretty interesting there